Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA issues a reminder on general aviation ADSB rebate rules. FAA and NASA conduct crash tests on a regional jet. And a hang glider pilot is attempting to fly from South Texas to Canada. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. The FAA is reminding general aviation operators taking advantage of the agency's ADSB rebate program that rebate reservations must be made within 90 days of the installation of the appropriate equipment. If the 90 days passes without a reservation being made, the rebate expires and will be made available to others. Last month, the FAA issued the last of $20,500 rebate reservations offered to general aviation aircraft owners. Since then, returned or expired reservations are being made available each Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on a first-come, first-served basis. All aircraft operating in most controlled airspace must be equipped for ADS-B out by January 1, 2020. And the FAA is highly unlikely to offer any extensions on this deadline. As one senior FAA staffer put it, there's not a chance. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Finally, a modern, affordable four-seater without compromise. Turbocharged Rotax 915IS power, 155 knot cruise, 800 nautical mile range, 1,000 feet per minute climb, and all that at 8 gallons per hour. Don't compromise. Check out the Sling TSI today at AirplaneFactory.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at some interesting stories coming out of the aviation industry. It's time for today's trip around the patch. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Bombardier announced they have entered into a definitive agreement where MHI will acquire Bombardier's regional jet program for a cash consideration of $500 million payable to Bombardier upon closing. And the assumption by MHI of liabilities amounting to approximately $200 million. The City of Los Angeles filed a lawsuit against the FAA and the U.S. Court of Appeals, challenging changes in the traffic patterns implemented as part of the Southern California Next Gen Metroplex plan. L.A. City Attorney Mike Fuhr alleges the changes in the approach and departure corridors for KLAX were made without proper environmental review or public input. He also claims the changes are the most recent failure by the FAA to address noise and other negative impacts from aircraft over flights in parts of the Mid-City and Central LA. A balloon participating in a bicentennial event for the town of Hannibal, Missouri, went through a crowd of people causing a slight injury to one person on the ground. Event organizers said one young girl was slightly injured when the balloon went through, and they're relieved to report nothing more serious. A German Air Force pilot died Monday when the Eurofighter Typhoon jet he was flying collided with another typhoon. During a training mission, German Defense Minister Ursula von Leyen said the two aircraft were part of a three-ship unarmed sortie that departed from their base in Lodge near the Baltic seaport of Rostock shortly before 2 p.m. local time. The collision occurred about 20 minutes into the exercise. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. The 
FAA and NASA performed a crashworthiness test of a Fokker F-28 aircraft at the Landing and Impact Research Facility at NASA's Langley Research Facility in Hampton, Virginia. The F-28 is a regional jet used on short to medium haul flights. NASA conducted a swing test and simulation of a narrow body transport fuselage section of the Fokker F-28. The test simulated an aircraft crash onto a dirt surface. Data from the test is used by the FAA to develop guidance on how to determine crash worthiness of various aircraft. The data also helps researchers determine how portions of the cabin interior and occupants of the aircraft react in a crash. 24 test dummies ranging from small children to adults, one weighing approximately 273 pounds, were used. Test results will also support the development of a new performance-based rule that will simplify the certification process by eliminating or minimizing the use of special conditions to certify aircraft. The FAA conducted the test in collaboration with NASA, the FAA Civil Aeromedical Institute, U.S. Army Test and Evaluation Command, and the NTSB. Pilot Robin Hamilton departed last week from West Houston Airport on a journey to the Canadian border to raise awareness for breast cancer. Hamilton chose to raise awareness for breast cancer with the flight because he lost his mother to the disease when he was 13. He has partnered with the Susan G. Komen Foundation for his challenging flight. While he has prepared as best as he can, Hamilton said that a lot of the trip will depend on wind and other weather conditions. If the winds are favorable out of the south, he could cover as many as 200 miles per day but headwinds out of the north could push in the other direction. In many cases, Hamilton hopes to have pilots tow him into the air to start each day's flight. But if he's not at an airport, he said he'll just have to look for a hill. You can follow the flight on the Facebook Group X Flight Gulf of Mexico to Canada. And that wraps up our week, everyone. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. And if you want to read up on some aviation aerospace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you right back here Monday.